whenever you're trying to read a METAR, it can feel like you're reading German that was written in Italian, then translated back to Mandarin, and then translated again back to English. Here's the easy way to decode that thing. Let go! Boom! Learning how to decode any METAR is going to be a very valuable part of your flight plan. Every time you go to fly, reading that METAR, understanding exactly what conditions are doing is going to be very essential and valuable to you. But it can be intimidating at first because it's a lot of shorthand abbreviations for things and a lot of things that you must know. We're going to, after watching this video, you're not only going to be able to quickly be able to read a METAR, but get the proper information that you need from it to determine whether it's a go or no go situation for you. Let's get into that thing. We back off in that thing. In its most simplistic form, a METAR is simply just a weather report that is issued every hour. It's incredibly invaluable to you because it gives you a great indicator of what's happening and with the conditions. Whether you're flying VFR or IFR, but also too, it lets you know about your personal minimums. You can calculate your personal minimums and let the METAR decide whether or not it's a go or no go for you. That's a great way for you to handle your personal minimums. You already indicated and you already determined what they are in your mind and you're just going to simply read the METAR and the METAR is going to let you know whether or not it's a no-go or go for you. Let's get into that thing. A, a great way to read any METAR or learn how to decode a METAR is when there's really bad conditions. Because when there's really bad conditions out there, you're going to have a very detailed kind of METAR. When it's nice and clear and this is a great time for you to fly, the METAR may be very simplistic telling you that it's clear skies, it's 10 miles of visibility, etc. But when it's not so great out there, that's a good time for you to review a METAR and kind of like play around with the coding or maybe pick areas that you're not even in if you're using ForeFlight or some others where you know there's bad weather currently happening and read the METAR from one of the local airports. It's a great way to get familiar with a lot of the abbreviations and a lot of the shorthand on a regular basis by exploring and using other parts of the world where there may be currently bad weather at the time and you're reading the METAR to understand exactly what it means and what it says. When you look at a METAR and there's a lot going on because those conditions are settling in out there or maybe certain things are transpiring, you may see something that looks like this, a bunch of gibberish all over the place. And it can be very difficult to determine what do you, should you be looking at and how you should be reading it. We're gonna walk through that thing from step by step. The good news is, Things usually fall in place in the same order around the same time, so it's easier to read that way, where it's not going to just be gibberish spread all over the screen for you at any given time. It has a certain order and a certain cadence to it. Let's run that thing. Hey, at the top of the screen, the first thing that you're going to probably see is the airport indicator. What airport is this METOR relevant to? For the example here, we have, of course, KDAD, 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 A, A, that's what she said. Let go! Once you have that airport indicated, then immediately after that, you're going to have the date. What is today's date? The day, of course, the 28th, and then you're going to have the time, 1956 Zulu time. If you want a review of how to calculate Zulu time, what does it mean in the easy way to calculate and understand it? There's a video where? Right here on this channel. A link at the end of this video, where them links be at? completely going over everything you need to know about Zulu time. So that's giving you the date and then the time. So those first three things there, very easy. Your airport indicator, what is today's date? Of course, 28, and then the time in Zulu. Universal time, 1956 Zulu time. Boom, so you got that out the way. Your very next indicator there is gonna be telling you about the winds and what they're doing. It's first, it's gonna give you the wind direction, 330. Then it's gonna give you that speed, 20 knots. So that thing is humming. And then it's going to tell you something like, it may say something like 24 Gs. So that means that it's gusting, that wind is gusting. This is a whole wind indicator line coming up here. So if, if the winds are gusting, wind gusts too full in that thing. So that wind is really pushing. You got it blowing in the direction of 330 at 20 knots, and then you got a gust happening at 24 knots. Woo! Wind gusts too full in that thing. Hey! Then after that, it may tell you the visibility. Three statue miles of vids. If you've ever been in anything less than 10 or 6 statue miles of visibility, you know that 3 statue miles of visibility is not a lot of vids. So being mindful of that and again, understanding not only the minimums of what it may take you to fly in certain airspaces, 
But what are your personal minimums? You already have your personal minimums. Let's just say at whatever level you are as a pilot and whatever your experience is, you made a decision to yourself that you don't want to fly in anything less than six miles of statue, statue visibility. So that three mile indicator would already indicate in your mind, it's a no go based on your personal minimums. This is how you play the personal minimum game. You already have them set based on your abilities, based on your standards, and you just let the METAR tell you whether or not it's a go or no go. It's a great way for you to stay safe and then you can keep stretching. You're having those stretch goals and stretch out those personal minimums as you fly, not only with more experience, with more people and in more situations, but you're doing it in a more calculated way versus you reading the METAR and then try to like think about it. Mm, should I go or shouldn't I go? So always something to keep in mind there. Hey, so then after you've dealt with the vids, now you're starting to get into some of the particulars about what's really happening with those sky conditions. So you start to look over here and you may see something that says minus RA. Now you're starting to get into a little bit of the shorthand that you're going to have to familiarize yourself with when it comes to METAR. RA just simply stands for rain, but that minus sign before is letting you know what type of rain. And that minus means that it's a light rain. If there was no sign at all in front of that RA, it would just be a moderate rain. If there was a plus sign in front of that RA, it would be a heavy rain. So that's how you can indicate that. Then it's telling you some more continuation about the sky. Scattered. Scattered at what? Where are those scattered clouds located? Whenever you read anything like scattered or broken or overcast, not only are you reading that, whatever numbers they give you after that, just add two zeros to it and it's going to tell you exactly how many feet those scattered clouds or broken clouds or overcast clouds are up. So here, scattered clouds, add two zeros to the end of that, 400 feet. Broken clouds, add two zeros to the top of that, 3,500 feet of broken clouds. Overcast clouds, add two zeros to that, at 8,000. Boom! It can get ugly out there. And then as you continue on reading your METOR, you may run across this thing that looks like a little division. Two numbers with a division sign going between it. That is very key. That is your spread between, that's your temperature, 20, and your dew point, 19. You really want to be mindful of the spread between those two numbers. The farther apart they are, the better. When they start to get close like that, 20 and 19 is very close, you can really get into fall light conditions. If you want a review of understanding the spread between dew point and temperature, there's a video on this page. There's also a video on this page explaining the different types of fog that you may be experiencing. So be mindful of that when you read any METOR. What is that spread like? What's that spread like? Spread it on that sandwich nice and cool. And then after you finish that, of course, come back to your altimeter setting. Just simply 2978 there. Then now you're starting to walk towards the end of the basics of understanding a METOR. You're getting into the remarks section. And then once you get anything past remarks, now you're starting to get into things that are more of an extension past the basics. If you can understand everything that you may deal with before the remark section, you will be in a very good place. There's other little things that you may experience along the way in terms of describing those sky conditions, so you want to familiarize yourself with that. And again, a great rate of practice is reading METORs all over the world, and you can get understand that shorthand and Google those kind of shorthand references that you don't really understand, that you don't really know. But if you understand those basics, everything before remarks, you already completed about 70% of really understanding and decoding any METOR. Now, when you start to get past that remark section, now you're starting to get into the fun stuff. And when you get past the fun stuff, you got something that may say something like AO2. What does that mean? That means that this system that's producing this METOR has an automatic precipitation indicator. And what that tells you automatically is that it can detect what kind of precipitation is happening. Is it sleet? Is it rain? Is it heavy? Is it moderate? Is it light? Uh, is it, has it turned into snow? Has it turned into hail? It can kind of indicate those kind of things automatically. That's what AO2 means. Or you may see something that says like AO1. AO1 means it's not an automatic precipitation indicator at this location. So here definitely has that automatic precipitation indicator. Boom! Next after AO2, you're going to start to get a couple pressure readouts. That first one you may read and indicate may say something like pressure, double R. That's letting you know if that pressure system is rising rapidly. Or it can indicate pressure FR, is it falling rapidly? Then immediately after that, another pressure readout, the sea level pressure, which is given to you in hectopaxels, which is very similar to your altimeter reading right here, 2978. If you're flying in the US, more than likely you're always gonna be using that indicator given to you, of course, that inches of mercury, 2978. But this is given to you in that hectopaxels, which translates into, of course, millibars, military uses this, maybe a few other organizations. So something you to be familiar with, but more than likely you're gonna be using 2978, that altimeter setting, 
as you go along. A. Then after that, you may read the letter P. You push in P now with a bunch of long numbers thereafter. That's just telling you the amount of precipitation that has happened within the last hour is read to you in the amount of hundreds of inches there. So not a lot, zero, 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 four. So not a lot of rain within the last hour. Remember, meteors are issued every hour. So it's giving you that indicator here whenever you look at any of these times that's coded in here, this is what's happening within the last hour. And of course, things should make sense and it should match up. There hasn't been a lot of rain within the last hour. And then of course, we know from up above, it's indicating light rain. So it all makes logical kind of sense that there wouldn't have been a lot of rain within the last hour. Then you may continue on here, of course, and you may see the letter T and a bunch of long numbers. And when you get to that letter T, you start reading those long numbers. All that is is giving you the exact numbers of your temperature and dew point. So you've already read the temperature and dew point up above. Boom, 2019. This is the exact number, 23 and then 19, 4 giving you that exact readout. So whenever you see that T, all this should match up and be logical to what's happening up above. So you see it kind of becomes redundant a little bit, kind of gives you a little bit more detail, but at the same time, things that you've already reviewed, if you kind of understand the basics. Then continuing on, you may see something that says something like PK win, and that's telling you the peak win of what's happening right there, and then what direction it was coming from, 340, what speed it was clocked at, 40 knots, and then of course, a slash and what time it was happening 37 minutes past the hour so again this should logically match up too if we already know that the wind from our basic readout on the METAR was it was coming from 330 at 20 knots with a 24 wind gust that's already very powerful and then this letter you in the remarks section let you know that the peak wind when it peaked over the last hour it was peaking at 340 so a very similar direction at 40 knots and that happened at about 37 minutes past the hour. So a lot of this just matches up logically as you begin reading it. And then it may give you something if you're really doing some fun stuff and you're really in some good conditions here. Woo! Then you may get a readout that's long like this. And all this is simply telling you again, back to that RA, we've already covered that here. We know that stands for rain. So the rain, when did the rain begin? 10 minutes past the hour. When did it end? 35 minutes past the hour. Then it says snow. When did the snow begin? 20 minutes past the hour. When did it end? 50 minutes past the hour. So you can kind of review these long ones like this that's telling you something that's happening, some part of that precipitation that's getting that readout from that automatic precipitation indicator. Rain, snow, hail, whatever it may be. When did it start? When did it end? When did it start? When did it end? Within the last hour on your METOR. Oh, and these are the basics for decoding and reading any METOR, how to translate that thing from German to English to Mandarin back to where you need it to be so you can understand whether it's a go or no-go situation for you. There's always going to be certain abbreviations or shorthand that may be a little bit unfamiliar with you, but just continue to practice by looking at airports all over the world, playing around with ForeFlight and various other kinds of tools. So as you begin to read them, you can kind of understand exactly what some of this shorthand means. And particularly for the area that you fly in your home base, do this very often because conditions in your area are usually conditions, conditions that stay consistent throughout the seasons. So as long as you're very familiar with what happens in your own local area and certain things pop up, whether it's dust, the snowstorms, or various other kinds of things, you'll always easily understand how to read those things. Hey, I am Donovan Batiste. This is Leadership Mindset. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel, like this video, comment on this video, share this video, and subscribe to this channel for a place where you can come for free and fun videos about everything that you need to know for you to become a pilot. Because I want you to feel what pilots all over the world feel when we swing it and bang it. Now thank you. Let go! Subscribe to this channel.